Don in London, hello, March 29th, 2010, coming up to the end of the month. Uh, my video is all about recovery from addiction to either substance or behaviour, or addiction to both substance and behaviour. Is there a difference? Well, I haven't found there is one, actually. We probably find we, are in a, we have a primary addiction in, in some way or other. And for me, it turned out to be alcohol. So these days, I'm a recovering alcoholic, one day at a time. And one of the things I had to get over was being an alcoholic. Because it was killing me, literally. And I don't know how many visits in the last few years of drinking I paid to hospitals to be revived in some way or other, or I was in there because somebody was concerned about my state of being. And that was a tragedy, and I only got there because of addiction. And somebody asked me, Did it, do I believe that addiction is a disease or an illness? And the answer is yes. Certainly it's a mental illness which is chronic. And we go from being a convivial drinker to a dependent drinker to a an addicted drinker, somebody who cannot stop. And it comes in different forms. It can be any form of binging through to 24-7 drinking, which is where I got to. And we don't have to go all the way to 24-7 drinking if we know we've got a problem. But the problem is, with any addiction, first of all, we are ignorant of our condition. And then second, we are probably in denial. We then have to admit it, and then we need to accept it. So, noise is off today. Something drilling away there. So what is it with being convivial, fixing ourselves and our feelings through to dependency, still fixing our feelings and emotions through to addiction where fixing anything is just fixing the need to drink because it's compulsive and necessary. If we don't drink we have a seizure, if we don't drink we can't function. So when people talk about functioning alcoholics it doesn't mean they're functioning in the truest sense of the word. Alcoholics like me functioned, stayed alive 24-7 by drinking and without it I could not cope in any shape or form. But do you know, is that enough? And the answer is no, because I didn't understand what life was all about. So these days, in recovery, I have a slightly better chance of recovery. I'm just going to pause for a moment. I feel a bit like Quasimodo and the bells in Notre Dame this morning. If it's not drilling, it's the neighbour's dog wobbled downstairs and creating havoc in my head because I can hear them. And somebody's now banging nails in the wall. <laughs> anyway, coming back to recovery. Yes, I'm in recovery one day at a time where I get to understand what my emotional, spiritual and physical state is. So if I have an understanding of who I am, my emotions, my spiritual connection to now and my physicality, what's going on for me, I have a better chance. And part of that is being assertive. How am I feeling? Why? What can I do? And often, if I'm on my own, how am I feeling? Why? And what can I do? is not a very good measure or balance. I need input. And where do I get input? Well, simply from family, friends, community, and a fellowship which I've come to be a part of, to be included in. And that fellowship is Alcoholics Anonymous. So whatever the substance might have been, in my case alcohol or the behaviour, which for me was collecting people, places and things, being obsessed, wanting to be loved, never sure if I was, never sure if I was capable of loving in a truly open, honest way, because I was always fearful of not being good enough. But this fellowship, AA, helps me on a daily basis find serenity and sobriety. And what does that mean? Well. Serenity is being able to accept what is, whether it's good or bad, happy or sad, joyful. Being loved, being able to love back and accept it as it is, rather than, rather than not accept myself first, which means I cannot accept other people as they are today. But now, I do accept people as they are today and how they may be in my life, and not be covetous in the sense of demanding more than I am able to. I don't demand anything. It's unconditional these days. But there will be a tweak from time to time which says, I wish 
I hope for more. And that's when I start to say to myself, hang on, what's going on? So fellowship is important to me, and I go to meetings of AA. I don't speak for AA, never can, never will, but I share a lot about how it helps me, because I need to include AA in my story of sobriety. So when I go to meetings of AA, there's a statement of intent shared, which I'm going to share now. And then uh, I'm going to share some literature as well, and how I am today. So, the AA preamble reads like this. Alcoholics Anonymous is a fellowship of men and women who share their experience, strength and hope with each other, that they may solve their common problem and help others to recover from alcoholism. The only requirement for membership, excuse me, <coughs> is a desire to stop drinking. There are no dues or fees for AA membership. We are self-supporting through our own contributions. AA is not allied with any sect, denomination, politics, organisation or institution. Does not wish to engage in any controversy. Neither endorses nor opposes any causes. Our primary purpose is to stay sober and help other alcoholics to achieve sobriety. And in my case, uh, <laughs> with noises off this morning, now somebody's uh, got a sanding machine going. So what is going on? Well, it's a Monday morning and work is happening around me, and that's perfectly good. And for me, this is part of, I suppose, my contribution to sharing experience, strength and hope, as it is. In this book, Daily Reflections, it covers the 12 steps of action a person can take to live well in recovery. And the 12 steps of action are about changing attitude and behaviour. We can change our attitude and behaviour in a moment if we understand what is going on around us. So if we understand our environment, we don't need to fear it so much, or maybe we do. We don't have to put a brave face on, we just have to be ourselves. We don't have to revert to ego, how dare this situation be the way it is. We can just say with confidence, this is the way it is, and how can I respond in it? So that's what I learn on a daily basis. So in Daily Reflections, this book is all about step three, which is letting go and letting good things happen for March. And, it says, and there's a bit here about trusted servants, about AA. And it says here, they are, they are servants. Theirs is some, sometimes thankless privilege of doing the group's chores, and that means things like sweeping the floors, making the tea, making sure people are greeted, or being, being involved and included. And it goes on to say an, an illustration. In Zorba the, the Greek, Zorba the Greek, the film, Nikos describes an encounter between his principal character and an old man busily at work planting a tree. What is it you're doing, Zorba asks. The old man replies, you can see very well what I'm doing, my son. I'm planting a tree. But why plant a tree, Zorba asks, if you won't be able to see it bear fruit? And the old man answers, I, my son, live as though I was never going to die. The response brings a faint smile to Zorba's lips, and, and as he walks away, he exclaims with a note of irony, How strange I live as though I were going to die tomorrow. As a member of Alcoholics Anonymous, I have found that the third legacy is a fertile soil in which to plant the tree of, of my sobriety. The fruits I harvest are wonderful, peace, security, understanding and 24 hours of eternal fulfilment. And with the soundness of mind to listen to the voice of my conscience when, in silence, it gently speaks to me saying, you must let go in service, there are others who must plant and harvest. So what we, what we do today will impact on people tomorrow. It doesn't necessarily mean we're going to be there to see it happen, but if we keep on with the unity, service and recovery and fellowship, it's what we give, not what we, we receive ultimately in these 12 steps of action of change. That's how it works in fellowship. We give it to keep it. All good, even the noise is off. So at the end of my videos when I say the serenity prayer to God of good conscience, no matter what the noises are, God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference is, for me, always, just for one day.